the gates of the moon. It's a castle at the base of the giant's lance in the Vale of Arran. It is a much larger castle than the Eyrie it protects. It stands on the site where Sir Artist Arran and his Andal followers made their camp before the Battle of the Seven Stars. After the battle, when the newly made King Artist was still unsure of his throne, he wanted a seat strong enough to withstand the barrage of the first men attacks that would surely be coming. That is why the Gate of the Moon was built, but it was more of a functional castle than a palace fit for a king. This was the opinion of the fourth Arran monarch, Roland I, who found it lacking in comparison to the grandeur of Castle Rock and the High Tower. Roland considered dismantling his seat and starting anew, but he instead decided to build the Eyrie high on top of the giant's lance after wild clansmen descended from the Mountains of the Moon. Now House Arran only retreats to the gates of the moon in the harsh winter month when living in the high towers of the Eyrie becomes an impossible task. The gate of the moon is held by a cadet branch of House Royce who holds it on behalf of the Eyrie and thus have become synonymous with the Arran seat. Larger than the Eyrie in footage, the gate of the moon is rather a stout castle with a moat, a gatehouse, a yard and a well. Much like any other basic castle in Westeros, the castle has square towers including the East Tower and the Falcon Tower. When viewed from the Eyrie above, the towers and the keeps of the Gate of the Moon appear the size of children's toys, with the garrison moving around like ants. The back of the castle's Great Hall has a pillared gallery, leads to tower stairs and the inner ward. The castle's vault contains granaries and dungeons. Prisoners can also be kept in tower cells, but more high-value prisoners, or those requiring a harsher punishment, are sent to the much-feared sky cells of the Eyrie. The garrison of the Gates of the Moon wear a sky blue cloaks. At night, torches flicker at the castle's ramparts, and the moon is reflected in its moat. Beyond the upper bailey's posturing gate is a dense forest of pine and spruce, as well as a steep carved steps along the giant's lance. Meals are kept at the Gate of the Moon to help transport travellers up the mountains to stone, snow and sky way castles on the harsh ascent to the Eyrie. Another iconic part of the defensive features of the Vale is the Bloody Gate. The Bloody Gate is a series of battlements located along the high road which leads to the Vale proper from the Mountains of the Moon. It protects against mountain clansmen and invading armies and more directly acts as protection for the Gate of the Moon and the Eyrie. The Bloody Gate is located southwest of the Eyrie and northwest of Red Fort. There are two parapets built into the stone of the Mountains of the Moon. The high road is so narrow where it meets the gate that only four riders can pass. It is watched over by twin watchtowers, which are joined by a covered bridge of grey stone that arches above the road. Defenders of the gate can fire through arrow slits in the towers, bridges and battlements. Beyond the fortification is a steep rocky trail which descends into the vale. Thus, the gate and the mountain parts is seen as impassable by any attacking force with the smaller force at the gate able to repel armies much bigger than their own size. Some compare the Gate of the Moon to Moat Kaelin, the castle that protects the approach to the north through the neck. In the same way the Bloody Gate protects the Vale from attack, it has also allowed many lords of the Vale to pursue a neutral position and stay out of wars for the most part. Many Aran kings and lords have refused even allies passage through the gate and access to the port of Goldtown in order to maintain this neutral position. Thus, coming out of long bloody conflicts, the Vale has often found itself in positions of strength when compared to the other kingdoms of Westeros. Originally, a rough-hewn, unmortared wall built in the fashion of the old ring forts of the First Men, the Bloody Gate was built up and rebuilt several times throughout the ages, but it was constructed for the final time during the rule of Osric V Arran, King of the Mountain and the Vale. Andors from the other kingdoms poured through the Bloody Gate in their thousands into the Riverlands and the kingdoms still under the rule of the First Men after the securing of the Vale. Ravens are kept at the gate, as are shaggy, sure-footed mountain horses in its stables that are perfect for traversing the perilous high roads. The Bloody Gate can provide respite for at least a few thousand men as they patrol through the Vale or campaign into the Riverlands. It is also commonly used as a rallying point for knights of the Vale during times of war. The commander of the fortification, the Knight of the Gate, traditionally asked the question, who would pass the Bloody Gate, to all who would pass through it. The Knight of the Gate is seen as a position of honour in the Vale and is respected throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Most Knights of the Gate have come from the Vale itself, with many even coming from House Arran, be it bastards or younger sons with little chance of inheritance. Thus, the Knight of the Gate that stands out the most is the current. When Lord John Arran married Liza Tully at Riverrun during the outbreak of Robert's Rebellion, Sir Brendan Tully informed his brother, Lord, Lord Hoster Tully, that he was going to serve John and his niece Liza 
rather than staying in the Riverlands and marrying some Bannerman's daughter. Often seen as a wild rebel, this suited Brendan. Lord Arryn named Brendan as Knight of the Gate when King Aerys II Targaryen died and Robert Baratheon became king.